since part one of the Infinite Warfare retrospective was already pretty ranty, we're gonna keep this one pretty short. I'm just gonna talk about what Infinite Warfare should have been because Infinity Ward, as in tune to the community as they tried to be, they missed the ball in a very key area and it's worth mentioning years later. In fact, one of my little conspiracy theories is that COD World War II's complete like rework after Michael Condry left was Activision basically okaying it because I think they regretted not doing a rework with Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare was a tough sell. Even though I was excited for the game and I can see a lot of objective quality in it, I was still a little disappointed to see more advanced movement after I just got done playing two years of advanced movement games. Now, there is another issue. I said this a long time ago. Infinite Warfare would have been 10 times better if it would have had Call of Duty Ghost map design. Large, interactable, destructible, that would have been the way to go with Infinite Warfare's maps. The fact that they went for cookie cutter, three lane, more Black Ops 3-esque maps is really disappointing. It didn't even take advantage of stuff like Zero Gravity or any fun new gadgets. It really did feel like Infinity Ward was copying off of Black Ops 3's homework because of how popular Black Ops 3's multiplayer was. Did we need three advanced movement games in a row with cramped, tight maps that play more like a clusterfucky arena compared to previous Call of Duty games? No, we didn't. This was, again, not a bad game, but at the complete wrong time. So map design was a big thing that I think they failed from the beginning with the design of the multiplayer. I think larger, more interactable, and some more gimmicks would have made the game feel a lot more fresh coming off of Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3, and also catering to Infinity Ward fans that sort of expect that style of gameplay. Next, I would have cut boost jumping from the multiplayer altogether. There was a game mode later on that just had the wall running and not the thruster jumping, and I feel like they regretted not turning the game into that because people were mad about advanced movement from the campaign trailer. Before we even saw how multiplayer played, we were not a fan of the jumping. So I think high mantling would have been okay to get to those higher areas that they expected you to be able to get to, but wall running and high mantling would have made the game, I think, a lot more fun than the Black Ops 3-esque thruster jumping. Then we would have had three Call of Duty games with their own styles of movement. Infinite Warfare would have seemed derivative from Black Ops 3, but it wouldn't have seemed like a carbon copy. Also, when the backlash about variants returning started, and it started pretty quickly, they really should have dialed them back. Now, I don't think just scrapping all of them was a good idea, but they should have made them incredibly easy to obtain. They should have lowered the salvage cost of every single high tier variant. They should have made salvage more abundant and they should have had a big campaign on Twitter and on Reddit explaining how getting the higher tier things is not gonna take the entirety of your life. And then the idea of supply drop only variants should have never crossed their mind. Unless they're the Mark II variants, which are the same as the base variants with bonus XP per kill, I think those are fine in supply drops because they're basically just giving you an extra opportunity to get that weapon. I mean, in some ways, it's also oversaturating the loot pool in other ways, but regardless, it's more abilities to get weapon variants. But the fact that there were unique variants with their own abilities that were limited to the Quartermaster supply drops only, that's a bad move. The way they handled mission team variants, post-launch weapons, and prestige weapons, that was all great. It was just sort of stained by the fact that there were lists of variants that you could only get through supply drops and you could never buy them with salvage. Even if you had a billion salvage, you could not buy them. You had to just keep opening supply drops. I also think keys for supply drops should have been way more abundant than they were. They weren't incredibly hard to get, but they needed to be easier to get. Also, I think a common supply drop for every sign-in on top of the daily login bonus would have definitely helped people feel like the game was less like Black Ops 3, which was a nightmare. Now, Black Ops 3's specialists are actually very popular. It's why they returned again in Infinite Warfare and again in Black Ops 4. People love cheap and easy kills. We see this in every single FPS game. People will try to come up with the easiest, cheesiest ways to get kills. And specialist and rig abilities were definitely that. Now, while I do think the rig weapons were, on average, more balanced than Black Ops 3's specialist weapons, but there was just an issue that it existed at all. I think only the non-lethal rig abilities should have stayed in the game. Yes, it still could have been annoying, but I think things like combat focus or reactive armor or rewind or FTL jump, those things I didn't really mind as much. It was getting immediately killed by the disintegration pistol, the ballista sniper rifle, stuff like that. That, that stuff was annoying and it still is. Also, they should have never had propulsion in the game to begin with. In case you guys don't know, one of the rigs, Synaptic, the robot, 
has an ability that's a passive ability that just allows him to move more freely through the air, damaging enemies beneath him as well. You see, you could switch rigs mid-game and you knew you had pissed somebody off if you started beating them and they switched to Synaptic. Because if they have an Elite Controller, Scuff Controller, they play Claw, they are going to be in the air 90% of the time. Combat in Infinite Warfare felt pretty grounded despite being an advanced movement sci-fi game until a Synaptic player essentially just floated through the map. And I really hated that. Now they eventually nerfed Propulsion, but it's still in the game. And it should have never been in the game. And there were variants that kept your accuracy at 100% even when jumping through the air. So if you had one of those variants and you run Synaptic with the propulsion and then maybe rewind so they can just get out of combat when you start to kill them, it was incredibly annoying. It boggles my mind that Infinite Warfare did so many things right but just messed up on some things that didn't even seem like they needed to be tried, like there was no point in adding that. So yeah. Infinite Warfare with larger maps, Infinite Warfare without boost jumping, Infinite Warfare without anything that just gives the advantage to a scuff or elite controller user, Infinite Warfare with easily obtained variants, and also better variant balance should go on top of that, because they had some variants there that gave a lot of people pause when looking at them because they're like, hey, that kind of sounds overpowered, and some of them did end up being overpowered. Infinite Warfare is a very easy game to point out the positives in. It just is. It just does so many objective great things, but map design, its variant implementation, uh, the way they did the rigs, it's so imperfect, it's worth mentioning if you're being critical of the game. And I wish those things weren't there. The reason I'm angry, the reason I'm sad talking about this, is because it would have been so much easier to stand up for the game if Infinity Ward would have made some really key important changes. Honestly, just removing boost jumping after that trailer should have been their number one priority. That single player trailer launched and it got so fucking hated because they were tired of seeing sci-fi and boost jumping, they should have come out and said, hey, there's no boost jumping in the multiplayer. It's a boots on ground experience that allows for wall running in key areas. Do not worry about you know people flying above your head. We had just gotten out of two years of that style of gameplay. So if you were tired of Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare, and if you were tired of that gameplay, Infinite Warfare was not gonna sell you on it no matter how pro-consumer and nice it was. And it was a pro-consumer game. It was a very solid product. Both in campaign zombies and multiplayer, it's a solid purchase, even today. But it needed to not have variants from Advanced Warfare and the movement and map design of Black Ops 3 and specialists from Black Ops 3, and that's essentially what people started to see. It was like, wow, this is Advanced Warfare mixed with Black Ops 3, gross. And no, it is its own game, but it could have been so much better. This isn't just missed potential, this is just mismanagement. Kind of makes sense that Activision would okay a giant expensive rework to COD World War II. When they saw people leaving COD World War II and complaining about it, they were like, nope, we're not having another 12 months of this. Rework the game, give them something to be excited about. Because I think they really regretted not doing that with Infinite Warfare. They could have saved that game, they could have propelled it, it would have not been a laughing stock. It would have been a lot harder for that negative common consensus to hold any footing if they had done the things I just mentioned. So either way, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you agree with me, that's great. If not, that's awful. You're a bad person. <laughs> I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.